Hey kids, it's Pastor Tony. And this lesson was first available online on May 30th, 2021, a Sunday. But it was a strange Sunday. Do you have any idea what made that day strange compared to all the other Sundays? It's because it was the fifth Sunday of the month. And that's strange for a month to have five Sundays. It only happens a few times a year. But since it's strange that that day was a fifth Sunday, I thought we would do another strange lesson from the Bible. A lesson that might make us think, whoa, that's a little weird. I might not have even known that happened in the Bible. And today's story is about fire. Fire can be mesmerizing. It can be destructive, but it can also be useful. Think of all the ways that we use fire. Sometimes we use fire so we can see, like with a lantern or a torch, especially at night, where if we're down in a deep, dark cave, or maybe down going through a tunnel. Maybe your family uses fire to cook, inside, outside, around a fire pit, hot dogs, burgers, s'mores. Oh, s'mores. S'mores made not with a piece of chocolate, but with a little thin Reese's peanut butter cup. Oh, fantastic. We use fire for heat, uh, to keep our bodies warm, to heat up our hot water so it's nice and warm in the shower, even to heat our entire house. Sometimes we use fire to protect us, like if you're out camping and you don't want the stuff that lives in the woods to sneak too close to your campsite, you might start a fire. Or even firefighters, they will use fire to stop a forest fire. Sometimes we use fire to create, like art, pottery, uh, tools, sometimes weapons, like to forge something. We even use fire to communicate. Over time, people have used fire to create smoke signals or even warning lights like back in the colonial days. And sometimes we use fire just to dispose of stuff, to get rid of things, like we burn our trash or we burn sticks, branches, bushes, even people. You might say, wait, Tony, what do you mean we burn people? Well, sometimes people, instead of being buried, they have their families burn their bodies, and then they take the ashes and they put it in what's called an urn, and the family might keep the urn in the house to remember their loved one. But today's strange story in the Bible about fire is about some people who were, they were being burned. At least the king tried to burn them to kill them because they displeased him, because they chose to obey God instead of the king. And the king who tried to have these three men burned, his name was Nebuchadnezzar. Do you remember who Nebuchadnezzar was? King Nebuchadnezzar was the king of Babylon who sent his army to fight and defeat the army of Israel. And when Nebuchadnezzar's army, when they won, they brought back treasure to the land of Babylon, but they also took some young men back with them to become the king's servants. Some of the young men included Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and those four and several others. They spent three years training to become servants of the king. And Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego ended up becoming personal advisors to the king. During the time that these men were serving the king, Nebuchadnezzar had a horrible dream. He was scared. He was confused. He didn't know what the dream meant, so he asked all the wise men for help. He told them, you have to tell me what I dreamt and you have to tell me what the dream means. But all those wise men were confused. All of them except for Daniel because God helped Daniel to know the dream and interpret it for the king. As a reward, the king appointed Daniel to be the leader of all the wise men of Babylon. And he promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to help as rulers overseeing all the areas of Babylon. While Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were working as overseers for the king to help run all of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar had an idea. He decided he was going to make a giant golden statue of himself to be worshiped by everyone. And that caused a problem. What was the problem? Well, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego worshiped only God. And because they chose to obey God and worship only God, Nebuchadnezzar decided to burn them in a furnace of fire. When Nebuchadnezzar threw those three men in the furnace, things didn't happen the way he thought they would. But everything did happen exactly as God wanted it to, the way that God had planned. Maybe you remember the story, maybe you don't. Keep watching so you can learn more. The 
Sometime after Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego began to serve in the court of King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, the king had a golden statue of himself made. The massive 90-foot tall statue stood as a monument to Nebuchadnezzar's power and greatness. The king ordered all the leaders of Babylon to come together for the dedication of the enormous idol. On the day of the dedication ceremony, all the leaders of Babylon gathered by the golden statue of King Nebuchadnezzar. A herald announced to the crowd that they were to bow down and worship the statue when the music began. Anyone who did not do as commanded would be thrown into a furnace of fire. So when the sound of music from the trumpets, harps, flutes, bagpipes, and all sorts of instruments was heard, everyone bowed down before the statue. Everyone, that is, except for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. A group of the king's advisors noticed that these three young Jewish men did not bow down and worship the statue. Jealous of the power the king had bestowed on these exiles from Jerusalem, the advisors went to the king to tell him of the men's disobedience. When King Nebuchadnezzar heard that they refused to bow to the statue, he became furious. In a rage, he had Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego brought to him to answer for their disobedience. He told them that if they continued to refuse to bow down and worship the statue, he would have them thrown into the furnace of fire. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego held to their faith. They told the king, the God we serve will deliver us from the fiery furnace. King Nebuchadnezzar had heard enough. He ordered the furnace to be heated seven times hotter than normal. His soldiers tied up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and led them to the furnace. As the doors of the furnace were opened and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown in, the heat and flames overpowered the soldiers and they died on the spot. King Nebuchadnezzar looked into the furnace, and to his amazement, he saw that the three young men were unharmed. Then the king noticed something even more amazing. In disbelief, he asked his advisors to confirm that there were supposed to be only three people in the fire. After his advisors agreed with him, the king said, I see four men walking unhurt and unbound in the fire and one of them looks like the Son of God. Nebuchadnezzar called for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to come out of the fire. He was so in awe of what he had seen, he praised the God of the three young men and declared that anyone who spoke against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego would be killed. The king said, there is no other God who is able to rescue in this way. Then the king promoted the three young men to high positions in his kingdom. That is definitely a strange story. You should read about that story. You could read it for yourself by going to your Bible and opening to the book of Daniel chapter 3. And when you read through that story, you might be surprised at some of the strange words and comments that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said to the king after he warned them about the consequences of them not worshiping the idol. He said, you have to worship the idol or you're going to be put to death. And if you would read what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, you might be surprised. Because what they said teaches us a lot about their faith in God. They said to Nebuchadnezzar, you can throw us into the blazing furnace. The God we serve is able to save us from the furnace and your power. If he does this, it's good. They were basically telling the king, go ahead. If you throw us in the furnace, okay. Because God, if he chooses to, he can protect us if that's what he wants to do. And if he does, That'll be great. We would love for that to happen. But even if God does not save us, we want you, our king, to know this. 
we will not serve your gods. We will not worship the gold statue you have set up. Now they're telling the king, we understand. God might choose to not protect us. He might allow us to die in the fire. But that doesn't change our mind because we will worship and obey only God, only the one true God, no matter what happens to us, no matter what everybody else around us is doing. King, we're going to serve and worship only God. You saw what happened. The three chose to obey God. The king tried to kill them, but God chose to protect them. And the king was astonished, amazed, shocked, maybe even scared by what he saw. Three men, plus an extra guy, in the fire, walking around inside the fire. So the king removes the three men. Their clothes, they're not even burnt. Their bodies, they don't even smell like smoke. The king is shocked, amazed, and the king decides to make some big changes. He declares that there is no other God that could have rescued these three men. And no one in my kingdom should speak bad about their God or there will be punishment. And then he promoted those three to even more important positions in the kingdom. Do you know what happened as a result? Lots of people learned even more about who God was and what God was able to do because of the choice that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego made to obey and worship only God, no matter what others around them were doing. We should be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We should choose to obey God no matter what the consequences, no matter what the others around us choose to do. There will be times when we will have to decide, should I do what God wants? Should I obey Him? Or should I try to do this other thing and fit in with my friends? That way I'm not made fun of, that way I don't lose friends. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they had to decide. Do we fit in with everybody else and it'll be okay? Or do we choose to obey God no matter what others do, no matter what the consequences? That's the way we should be living. There will be times when it will be easy to obey God. There will be times when it will be hard. But every moment of every day for the rest of our life, try as best you can to choose to obey God no matter what. That's a great example, a great reminder from this strange story. So this week, go be like Jesus. Choose to obey God no matter what. And as you do, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you can help others learn more about who God is and what He's like, which is exactly what we should be doing as Christians. So go do that this week, and I'll see you next time. Bye.